green light. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Foreman. I live at 5351 Parker Avenue in Saanich, and I've lived there for the past uh, 30 years. Uh, for those who don't know, Parker Avenue is <clears throat> described by the real estate industry as high bank waterfront. And uh, it's not like the Gary Oak areas and things like that. It was developed at least 80 years ago, and uh, it's only from the forethought of those developers who put in sea defenses that we even have the property there today because the sea would have taken it away a long time ago if they hadn't built uh, sea walls and things to stop the waves from eating away at the bank. As such, there's nothing really natural about it. It's really a very artificial environment, even when it looks a little natural. So I'm going to ask um, the uh, Council of Saanich to please nullify <coughs> the present discriminatory EDPA bylaw. Its origins are suspect because few, if any, of the affected people were aware of it until after it was already adopted by Council and it appears to have been drafted by an environmental Taliban <laughs> who in large part do not own any of the affected lands. It displays a lack of scientific validity or valid goals in the best interests of citizens and the environment. I do not believe that the EDPA affects my house although I'm not really certain in, in that belief. I, I could be wrong. However, I have the utmost sympathy for those people this evening who do have problems of that nature, and I support their efforts to obtain relief from this onerous aspect of the EDPA. My concern is merely the care and maintenance of my property. I have no plans to redevelop it, subdivide it, or do anything crazy like that. Um, the EDPA diminishes my rights as a landowner. It is discriminatory in that it is, does not apply to most other Saanich landowners. It has the potential to compromise my property value and it inhibits my wishes and intentions to make very necessary changes to improve the condition accessibility and appearance of the landscape on my property. I'm referring, of course, to the high bank, which is a real challenge. Given the bylaw wording, I'm not sure that I can go outside and remove a native weed without first running to City Hall to obtain a permit. It is a powerful incentive to do nothing. I now wish to register my support for Saanich citizens for a responsible EDPA, their concept of an independent scientific advisory committee, and a voluntary land stewardship program. Thank you very much. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Peter. Uh, 51. Fifty-two. Great, thank you. Ken Moselle, 4967 Cordova Bay Road. In case you don't know where that is, I'm going to repeat what I said in the last town hall. It's 50 meters north from Death Curve on Cordova Bay Road, which the Saanich engineers put in there to calm traffic. I'm telling you, if you try to navigate a bicycle and a car on that curve, you cannot. Pardon me? I'm already on yellow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Ah, okay. So in any event, that's where I live, just 50, 50 kilometers north of the death curve on Cordova Bay Road. Now you know about it, so you can't maintain that you don't. Okay, so first of all, let's see, so it's sort of all over the place. So I sat down earlier, several hours ago, and I saw this thing here that said www.sanich.ca, and I thought, okay, this is from Sanich. Um, they called the meeting, so they've got a piece of white paper on all the chairs. This is great. Then I saw a piece of green paper on all the chairs. And I thought, oh, this must be from Sanders. It's got some informative information on it. Then I read it, and I said, this is sort of skewed. Then I read down at the bottom, it said, w, the HTTP dot dot slash slash 
Protect Sanage Environment.weebly.com. I think that's not Sanage at all. This is a partisan piece of paper on every single share here. So surely Sanage would be very concerned that this meeting had somehow been usurped by this partisan group, so I've done you a favor and collected all the green people. Now let's talk about neutral and arm's length. I'm going to paraphrase cool hand Luke. What we have here is an egregious failure around what is obviously a need to preserve separation of duties. I'm talking about the process whereby EDPA is, is enforced. I don't even care what the EDPA says. Obviously, the way it's enforced is the problem. There's two sides to the EDPA issue. That is obvious. There is a problem with the way it's being enforced. I note a diversity of opinion here this evening. I hear nobody has come forward in any of these meetings and said, we are really happy with the way the EDPA is informed. It's a nice neutral arms length process. It adjudicates intelligently on some of the complex issues. Nobody has said anything close to that. So there is a problem with, you can get all the consultation on EDPA you want as long as you maintain the, the, the process that you put in place in order to enforce and adjudicate on the very complex cases that are invariably going to arise, you will not solve the problem. And a topic that should naturally bring everybody together will remain divisive. And the rhetoric will become, will remain sharp. So, let's see if I can get through my chain of logic here. So the EDPA reflects a consensus on what constitutes the public good, and it's well written, and it um, anticipates, um, um, if it anticipates all the relevant scenarios and contains provisions to address them, it, it anticipates all the adverse impacts and contains provisions to address them. If it's based on sound science and contains objective criteria, so any issue could be adjudicated objectively and neutrally, well then, it's very straightforward. It's a good piece, if, that, if it meets all those conditions, then you should be able to um, create a neutral arms length adjudication body that could take all of these biologist reports and all of these other situations and create and inject wisdom where the situations are complicated, which they are invariably going to be, and get Sandwich out of the business of adjudicating. I would suggest that you take a look at the Freedom of Information Protection of Privacy Act, where they recognize Freedom of Information Protection of Privacy. There's a dialectic. What do you do? You create the Privacy Commissioner, OAPC. You do something like that, and you can keep EDPA, and you can inject the wisdom that is required in order to move the legitimate agenda forward and deal with many of these problems that we've got right now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to be, instead of having people on deck, we're going to be running through numbers now because I think we've had a fair amount of people go. Are you 53? 54. 54. Okay. So 55, you're going to be up next if you're out there. Come on up. No 53. Is my green one? Okay. Good evening. I'm Dr. Jessica Ball. I live at 4967 Cordova Bay Road. I've been a resident at this address for the last 20 years. Since 1995, living with my family as a grateful visitor to the traditional and still unceded territory of the Songhees, Esquimalt, Bakungan, and Sayot First Nations. I'm an ardent proponent of environmental protection. I'm a proud member and longtime donor to the Western Wilderness Committee. Greenpeace, the Nature Conservancy, the Dogwood Society, and most importantly, my family is a local habitat steward for Cordova Bay, having happily been educated, guided, and honored by our local, donor-dependent, consultative, research-driven Habitat Acquisition Trust. I have no plans to develop my property, and I have no immediate plans to sell the property, my property is 100% in the EDPA. But I'm registering my strongest possible critique of the EDPA today and my call for the EDPA to be repealed. I don't think that this is a matter that just affects homeowners. I think it affects every single tax-paying resident of Sandwich. My complaint about this preposterous act is that it reflects 
bad governance that can be summed up in one word, pseudo. As far as I'm concerned, this is a pseudo council of governments. Based on its behavior surrounding this ludicrous EDPA, this council and the council that brought in the EDPA is a pseudo government. Pseudo democracy. The EDPA was not based on sound practice of participatory and consultative municipal governance of the kind that we well-educated, nature-loving, and responsible residents of Sandwich have traditionally cherished. The council implemented only the most minimal and clearly ineffective public notification tools. It is entirely based on pseudo-science. The EDPA introduces uniform measures across diverse ecosystems as if one size fits all. It appears to be based entirely on pseudo-biology. Virtually no scientific evidence has been cited in any print or online materials justifying any one component of the EDPA based on empirical data showing that any of the measures will have known specific positive impacts on any single bit of flora or fauna designated according to unknown criteria as endangered or at risk. Even if we all implemented the EDPA exactly and for years, how many years, there's no evidence showing that this would have a single bit of impact on any particular aspect of the elements of ecosystems supposedly at risk. The EDPA is based on pseudo-geography. The staff that developed the EDPA have stated that the designation of pseudo-eco-sensitive areas was based on mapping that was not done in the current century. For most of Sandwich, it has still not been done. The EDPA is based on pseudo-green public relations strategy. The name sounds good. The staff told me that they were simply implementing what other green municipalities have done. When I mentioned the act to the residents of Saanich, most of whom have never heard of it, they say that the words environmental protection sound really good. Who wouldn't support that? I have to tell them, just don't look too closely. It's all smoke and mirrors pseudo-green. It's based on pseudo-economics, the purposeless but inflammatory arm-waving acti activity by municipal staff around the EDPA costs real money. I'm sure we're into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. But there's a record of false information about costs to the public. Some months ago, I asked Adrienne Pollard for a costing of the implementation of the EDPA. She sent me an analysis that totaled less than $10,000. I had no idea that she worked for free, that her staff and the various biologists working for her staff work for free, that the PR consultant hired to give the appearance of listening to the public at the Commonwealth Place event charged so little. Given that it's obvious that the amount of energetic arm waving by salaried employees of the municipality and the ongoing and increasingly intense debate about the EDPA costs real money and time, Think of all the things that this council could be doing to re-govern really and do things that are priorities for the residents of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have 55? 56? 57? 58? Is that 58? Great, come on down. And do we have a 59 to come down on deck? A 60? 61? 62? 62 is coming down on deck. Great, please go ahead. All right, thank you. Mayor, Council, um, thanks for having me here today. My name is Mark Insley. 4909 Cordova Bay Road. Um, we have no subdivision potential uh, at my property. I'm definitely not motivated by property uh, by, from my not supporting the EDPA. And I have no intention of selling anytime soon. Um, I came by this whole process, by probably many people, by learning inadvertently that we were covered by the EDPA when I went to rebuild. Um, some old steps down to the beach so my family would have access uh, to the ocean with our boats. 
So we went, long story short, that was in 2014, we went for 18 months, two summers, with no access to the beach because we were trying to follow due process for an EDPA permit. Uh, we gave up after about $10,000 worth of stuff. Said, so forget it. But anyway, so here we are today. What are we going to do? You know, the present EDPA and its invasive species bylaw, the big stick, um, does not encourage landowners to protect the environment. You know, instead, it stuffs it down our throats. And, that, and you know, as the legal is, I think from Uvic, whoever stated earlier here, and it sounds like Sanchez is well within its jurisdiction to deem all of the environment as EDPA. And where there's no obligation to compensate for any hard, hardship. Wow. I, that I just floors me. So there goes the concept of property rights and at least any ethical sense of fairness. I, I'm just blown away by that. But it does give the basis of why we are where we are today. So we heard of all the difficulties that the present bylaw has. And there can really only now be a few who do not believe it needs to be amended if not completely redone. A law meant to protect and enhance environmental diversity has instead divided the community. It's pitted neighbors against one another. And to lose its trust in local government. We heard a little bit about that in the last speaker. And mostly this is because of poor implementation and management. The concept is good, but the execution really flawed. And by now, there should be no doubt about the direct and intermediate and in, 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 immediate costs of this bylaw that are being borne by individual owners and by sandwich. I mean, it costs me and lots of others by the sounds of it. And I've been following this now for, well, it's three years. And that's not to mention the soft costs that have also been you know, brought up. The loss of potential property value or time loss due to regular regulation ambiguity, and of course the emotional hardship that many have gone through, you know, with dealing with all of the above. My father, Alan Minsley, when he retired as a geological, sorry, geotechnical engineer, civil engineer from uh, Thurber Consultants, spent much of his time supporting the community, Kerr Bay Association, uh, Challenge Place, uh, brought in, helped bring in sewers in the Kerr Bay, and because of the environment. He used his skills to advocate for the environment, particularly for the marine environment and to challenge development when that was at risk. It challenged development when, it, when the environment was at risk. And that. He was particularly good at gaining consensus and building bridges uh, between diverse groups. And this was his skill. I wish I had a fraction of his, his skills. I mention this because if Dad were here today, it, it was, today would have been his 85th birthday. It was 12 years ago he passed. And I know he'd be against this bylaw, and he'd want something practical in its place instead. The initiatives put forth by the Sanders Citizens for Responsible EDPA meet this criteria. They're good. They're consensus building. And then, You're at one minute. So let's move on this already. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Okay, we have number 62, and do we have a 63 to follow? 64. 65. Mr. Mayor and Council, Norm James, 966 Page Avenue. I've lived in Sanders for over 30 years. I've worked for engineering companies. I've done projects for Environment Canada, down at Ogden Point, Parker Avenue Beach and other places around the province. Sandwich needs to get their house in order. This bylaw stinks. The bylaw in itself may be illegal. The administration stinks. Sandwich wants the residents to pay for the biologist, for the environmentalists, for the surveyors, but when they do that, your bureaucrats turn a nose up at the reports from people that have legal authority and legal standing and professional standing and ignore the reports because of their own self 
self-serving agendas. It doesn't work in a community. They're supposed to be called public servants. They're not serving the public. They're serving their own interests. And there's one particular woman that has been mentioned at least a dozen times tonight and in back in the break mentioned over and over and over and over again, nothing is done. I was an executor over the last two years. And as soon as there's a development permit or other development restrictions on land, the price goes down. You may not think so, but it does. It cost our family close to $100,000 because of development permits and other development areas on the land that I had to sell. You people, your bureaucrats, whoever put all this together, pick and choose, like they said, from old maps. There's no consistency. This property has it, this one doesn't. That one does, the one across the road doesn't. This little stream does, that one doesn't. Sandage is part of the problem. I can show you a couple of pieces of property where they haven't cleaned the ditches, which means all the brush and the leaves and everything else fill the ditches, now puts water onto a piece of land which has now been called a wetland. Because Sandage and Sandage Park hasn't done their job. Something's got to be done. Santa, put your house in order. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we invite number 66, and I just, before you go up, um, do we have 67? 68? 67? Great. Come on up. Okay. Yes, please. Marin, excuse me, Marin Council, staff, um, thank you uh, for having another open house. Uh, people earlier were talking about looking at things at 10,000 feet. I'm going to take it back down to about a meter and a half. Can we just get your name, please, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Eric Daly. I live at 2923 Mount Baker View Road. My apologies. Thank you. Um, we all want some kind of EDPA to be successful. But, you know, there's some unintended problems and unintended issues that have come up. You know, if the purpose of the EDPA is to protect native vegetation, then I think we should have a good, hard look at deer management. I mean, do... I mean, do the deer understand the EDP regulations or do they just consider it lunch? Uh, we've got a deer problem, folks. Um, and if we could get a permit for a front yard fence, that's, it's a maximum of 1.5 meters for front yard fences. Show me a deer, a hungry one, that can't jump 1.5 meters, and I'll show you a retired deer. <laughs> so we've got a deer problem, and we've got a fence height problem. Now, those are fixable without going to 10,000 feet and looking at it. Um, beach access within the EDPA. I think that beach access is that it's property. So, so we now have a, a, a conflict with incentives, as I see it. If you have an EDPA strip of beach access and Sandwich doesn't, uh, their own properties aren't covered by the, uh, by the uh, noxious weed bylaw, but then you have, you're in the EDPA because of beach access. So is Sandwich going to get in the uncomfortable position having to, uh, to what, find yourselves? Uh, that would be interesting. Um, I was talking to a realtor 
he tells me that the term for EDPA land is a latent defect. It's something called a latent defect. Now, I'm not going to be listing our property, but damn it, if I was, I don't want any sign anywhere saying I've got a latent defect. I mean, that'd be hard to sell. And we have on Mount Baker View Road, where I live, we have a vacant lot. It's a wonderful pie-shaped lot. 12 feet on the road, 150 on the water. In my dreams. Um, when you take the almost 50 feet of back shore <clears throat> and you add a little bit of wetland because there is an old stream bed running through there and the building setbacks, my unprofessional opinion, and I'd love someone from Sandwich to come out with me and, and walk the property, I don't think that is buildable. I don't think, because it's a, a vacant lot, nothing's ever being built on it. I'm not going to contact the owner. Will one of you people contact the owner and tell him that his $1.45 million is <clears throat> less? Um, and before, before I forget, I mean, the people have been talking tonight about how green, green they are and how wonderful it is. Well, I'll be at council meeting on Monday night with a parks plan to talk about and fight to save Harrow Woods one more time and work on the parks plan. So we'll be there for that. So if, if the green people are keeping track, Cabra Bay is still green. But you know, some people say, damn it, we should have a referendum. I don't know, but it helped. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, you did time that perfectly. Okay, uh, 68, please. Oh, 67, yeah. <laughs> Mayor and Council, good evening, I'm Yvette Zanata, and I live in Saanich at 3871 High Street and our property and houses in the EDPA. I do consider myself a protector of environmentally sensitive ecosystems. I have participated with Habitat Acquisition Trust planting native plants on our two-acre property. As well, doing broom poles with the Friends of Knockin Hill Park Society and getting rid of invasive species. However, I am asking Mayor and Council to repeal this flawed, punitive, and restrictive EDPA bylaw. This bylaw was not properly implemented. And legally, I think on these grounds alone, the EDPA bylaw should be revoked. I never received a letter from Sandwich in 2012 notifying us of the EDPA bylaw. So I was very surprised when I received my first letter from Sandwich in 2015 asking for our feedback on the EDPA. We had no knowledge of it whatsoever. I attended the first open house in June of 2015, and I met countless others who were also quite angry that they were not informed in 2012 of the EDPA bylaw. We actually have new residents in our neighborhood that are unaware that their newly purchased properties are in the EDPA. And I don't want to tell them. I think that should be Saanich that should tell them. Apparently, the realtor did not know what an EDPA was. And my husband talked to him. That was his word. He did not know what an EDPA was. I heard counsel say at um, the September 28, 2015 meeting, it was one of the women here. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember which one. Not Mrs. Bryce, but um, anyways. Uh, she said that everybody had an opportunity to be involved in 2012 when this bylaw was being put forward. Well, that is not true. And I asked Council, how could there be an opportunity for public input and discourse if EDPA residents were not notified in 2012? 
And how did so many people get missed? Clearly, I think Sanchez has made a mistake, and it just wasn't properly done. If EDPA landowners were informed in 2012 and were invited to participate, we would probably not be here tonight in such conflict and disagreement. I've attended all the open houses and the town hall meetings, and I've heard over 180 property owners that are against this bylaw. I think it would be prudent of Saanich to seriously consider the opinions of these EDPA property owners. 